Thanks everyone for joining this session on edge computing using keys on Raspberry Pi. My name is Jeff Spar. I'm a senior engineering manager at Lenovo. So let's start with what is edge computing? It's when you're bringing compute and storage closer to the source of the data. This is typically sites that are not data centers. So it could be factory floors, vehicles, retail stores or restaurants, wind farms, it could be constraints around space, power, or cost. And what makes this project edge computing? We've got a small form factor. We've got the Raspberry Pi, which is about the size of a wallet. Uh, we have low power consumption with the ARM64 processor. Uh, and uh, Keys has some abilities to, to bootstrap applications without an internet connection as well. So why Raspberry Pi? Well, the latest one comes in three sizes. There's the two gig, four gig, and an eight gig option. Uh, that my inflection point for getting into this was when the eight gig option came out about mid 2020. Uh, for me, that was, uh, yep, that, that's enough to, to go ahead and run a Kubernetes node with the applications I'm interested in. Uh, so this will be a fun home lab project. They all have the same processor. It's a quad core ARM64. They're small and quiet. They're inexpensive and they have low power consumption. Uh, th this was important for me because I've always kind of had interest in having a home lab, but I don't have a ton of space. Uh, if I ever do the, the 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 calculations of what the price would be to run a real server for an entire year in my home, uh, that's usually enough to 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 tell me uh, that I'm not going to do that project and move on to something else. Uh, so this was this was a good opportunity to get into this for me. Why keys? That's K3S, pronounced keys, by the way. Uh, well, it's packaged as a single binary, so that makes it pretty easy to install. It also gives it a smaller memory footprint. Uh, it comes with things out of the box that I needed, like local storage provider and traffic ingress controller. Uh, it has really good ARM64 support. It's a very active project with a large user base, and it's backed by Rancher, so it's probably not going anywhere. For the parts list, uh, so I started with three Raspberry Pis, uh, three SD cards. Uh, I had a, a use case where I needed more capacity here, so that here's a place where you can save some money if you don't need quite as big of an SD card. Uh, three power supplies. Uh, if you look around uh, the internet on this, uh, most people recommend not to use a just a USB-C phone charger that you have lying around because uh, you're not guaranteed to have the um, consistent voltage that you need. Uh, so I just went ahead and didn't want to deal with that. Uh, so I bought the official power supplies. Uh, about one case and a couple micro HDMI to HDMI adapters. Total came in just under $400. I bought this in pieces too. If I did it all at once, I probably would have uh, uh, thought twice because I didn't realize I spent $400 on this project. But still, it's relatively inexpensive compared to, you know, buying three three servers and and doing anything with them. Uh, core project goals uh, for me, I wanted to get to the Kubernetes API as fast as possible. Uh, every every layer below that was slowing me down. Uh, and it's important to note that this was my goal. Uh, spend time on the lower layers if you haven't already. Uh, I wanted it to be HA, so I wanted to be able to take nodes out, uh, whether it's for an upgrade or uh, you know, to swap it out because there was a hardware failure without disrupting the application I have running on there. I wanted it to be relatively inexpensive. I wanted to contribute back al along the way if there was an opportunity. Uh, and I wanted to capture everything as code so this is reproducible both for myself as well as others who are interested in getting into this. So step one was create an image. Uh, I used Ubuntu. There's really good uh, ARM64 support with Ubuntu. Uh, there's a tutorial linked to, to how to image your SD card around this. Um, but basically, I was using a Mac at the time to do this. List your volumes, unmount the one that's the SD card, and do this little one-liner where you're unzipping the image and DDing it uh, to that SD card. 
uh, it was important to me to have this uh, just join the network and, and get an IP address on boot because I didn't want to have to hook each one up to a monitor and keyboard and configure network. Uh, so I used NetPlan to do this. Uh, pretty simple configuration. Just here's your uh, the name of your access point. Here's the secret to join. Uh, and then the OS bootstrapping, super minimal. Um, I only have five Ansible tasks. Uh, and we'll... Uh, We'll go through here and we'll start running it while I walk through what the files are. So only one of these is actually required to run keys. Uh, you'll see the, the first thing I'm doing is just setting the host name. Uh, then I'm adding my user saying don't require a password for sudoing with my user. Uh, I'm putting my SSH key on there. Uh, and this is a, a pretty useful trick if you don't know about it already, is you can just grab those off of GitHub. Uh, and then this was the important one, uh, enabling C group uh, and this, this boot option. Uh, that, that's required in order to run keys or Kubernetes in general. So I can see this is, this is going through and running. It's already been through one node. It's about to start the third node. And after it finishes the third node, the next thing that we'll do is actually install keys. So to install keys, I use this project called Ketchup. Uh, this is straight out of the README. It's a lightweight utility to get from zero to cube config with keys. All you need is SSH and the Ketchup binary. Uh, this made things really simple. I'll walk through what this does. And we can see my Ansible playbook finished. So to save some time, let's go ahead and start this keys install. And I'll walk through what the install file does. So really simple bash script, just wrapping the wrapping catch up. Here's my Kubernetes version. Uh, here's my uh, my three different nodes. Here's the user I want you to connect as. The first one, catch up install. And the second node is catch up join. And the third node, same thing, catch up join. And at the end of here, remind you to set your cube config and uh, tell you where it is. So over here, I can see that's running. Uh, you can follow along. Uh, it's grabbing the binary. Uh, it's installing it to user local bin keys, uh, symlinking some utilities that you'll need to keys because I mentioned it's a single binary. Uh, it's already done one node. It's moving on to the second. I mentioned the second one is a join versus an install, and it'll do the same for the third as well setting up the unit file and then it's going to start keys at the end so while that's running i'll talk through uh some of the bootstrapping mechanisms that you can use uh any uh any manifest or or helm chart that that sits in this folder uh on the server var lib rancher keys server manifest Will get applied as if it was a kubectl apply dash f so this is this is all stuff that comes out of the box core dns i mentioned that local storage provider metric server and that traffic ingress controller uh, but you could use this if you wanted to uh, to to add your own manifest for things that you wanted to bootstrap and then if you do have constraints around not having an internet connection uh, there are some tricks you can do uh, with CRI CTL to uh, manually unpack an image. You'll, you'll need to do that on each of the nodes. Uh, here's, here's a link to, to go ahead and do that. Um, that'll work. Uh, it's probably a better option to have a private registry. Uh, this is a little bit hacky, but uh, it, it might work for your use case. Let's check back in on the install. It's on the third node. And it's just starting the keys service. And when that's done, we'll, we'll walk through what a node upgrade looks like. 
So for node upgrades, uh, I, I wanted to be able to do this through the Kubernetes API if possible. Uh, I didn't want to, you know, SSH to the server and, and do some things and rely on Ansible to do this. Um, so luckily this problem was already solved. Uh, Rancher has a controller called System Upgrade Controller. Uh, the architecture for that is it's got a controller and it's looking for uh, plans. Uh, and when it sees a plan that it needs to act on, then it will go ahead and run that job and go through each node and do the upgrade in, in the way that you described it. And looks like we're almost done. Oh, that was the second node, not the third one. So we're on the third one now. And let's see. Don't want to get too far ahead. This should start pretty soon. So while we wait for that, we can talk about um, some other things that I considered to be core components. Ah, nope, it's done. We'll come back. So we're done. We've got a kubeconfig file that it dumped here. So let's export that. Oops. And then let's do kubectl get nodes wide. And we'll see, we've got three nodes. They're all control plane nodes. They all have that role. Uh, the version here is 121.2, which is what we specified in that install file. Here's their different IPs. Here's proof that we're running Ubuntu uh, and you know the kernel version and container version. So that's exciting. That was pretty low effort to get a three node Kubernetes cluster out the door. Uh, some of you all might notice the the age of these is is more than just you know a couple of minutes. Uh, that's because I've already gone through this uh, several times. But you can rerun the Ansible playbooks and you can rerun the install, and it'll actually go through and do it all again. So node upgrades. We talked through the system upgrade controller. Let me show you what a plan looks like. So here we have uh, an upgrade plan that includes a server, uh, which is which is the control plane node in, in keys terms, as well as an agent, which is just a worker node. Um, for this, for my my cluster, we really we only have servers; they're all control plane nodes. Um, but I included them both in here uh, in case that changes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rev up this version number. It was one twenty one point two. Let's change it to 121.3. We'll save that. And we'll apply that plan. And this is a CRD kind plan. Uh, and that will show up as a job. Here's the job right here. And as that job starts running, we should see that cycle through each of the Kubernetes nodes. Okay, so this is actually a good, good sign. Uh, you see that my uh, connection to the API server failed. Uh, this is something that I'll talk about uh, in, in one of my next slides. It's the, it's the only piece that's not HA. Uh, so this is HA in the sense that there's three control plane nodes. They're all running at, at CD, uh, and that's that's clustered. Uh, you know, if one one fails, then you know jobs will continue to run on other nodes. Uh, the piece that I still need to to get working is uh, DNS for the Kubernetes API. Currently, just points to that first node. So there's a there's a project out there called Kubevip. 
um, that will will help with that. It can do things like ARP uh, between nodes, uh, so we can move that IP if that node goes down. So that means that node's done already. That was that first node. You can see now we've got version 1.21.3. And we can look at that job. It's still running. Oh, so one job is complete. We've got another job running. And it will cycle through each of these nodes until they're all version 1.21.3. So that's pretty neat. It's a way where we can uh, manage all of our um, all of our over-the-top uh, Kubernetes uh, you know, management is done through the Kubernetes API. So we'll come back and look at that again and see how it's progressed. So for what I consider to be uh, core components, I included those all in this manifest folder uh, in this repo. So these are all things that I think uh, any Kubernetes cluster should have at a bare minimum. Uh, my original intent was to watch this folder with Argo CD. Um, so we'd have a GitOps flow where I'd upgrade or update the, uh, the repo, and then that would automatically get applied uh, uh, to the cluster. Um, I'll, I'm going to be coming back to that. Uh, Argo CD doesn't have an ARM64 image yet, uh, but it's pretty close. Uh, so once that's available, I'll pick up that piece of the project. So for now, uh, I'm going to kubectl apply to uh, these files. Uh, I wanted to avoid shortcuts, so I'm using real DNS, and I've got external DNS, uh, which is a pretty useful controller uh, that plums into my DNS provider. Uh, so as I create, uh, you know, ingress resources or that sort of thing, it's going to also uh, create a DNS record for them. Uh, also using Cert Manager to make sure I get real certs. Uh, it's so easy these days with Cert Manager and Let's Encrypt to get real certs uh, that there's, you know, kind of no reason not to go down that route. Uh, that will let you avoid even for your home lab stuff to, to not click through browser warnings, um, which is actually pretty nice. Let's check on our upgrade job. So we can see that second node has now been upgraded. We've got version 1.21.3. You'll notice it also includes a container runtime update, 1.4.8 for the two newer ones. The old one's still 1.4.4. So what's next for this project? So I mentioned kubevip. Uh, I need to finish that up in order to have you know API server failover and have this truly HA. Uh, that's that's already out and available. I just I just ran out of time, uh, so I'll come back to that and, and upgrade this update this repo once I have that working. Um, Argo CD ARM64 support. Uh, I started this project over six months ago. Now they're they're very close to uh, to having uh, ARM64 support built into their build process. That's coming in version 2.2, and they're on version 2.1 now. Uh, and that'll make this a full you know GitOps style of management. Uh, I also want to spend some time looking at something like Tinkerbell to bootstrap over the network instead of imaging an SD card. Uh, that's a, a fairly manual process of you know taking an SD card, uh, plugging it into your laptop, uh, you know running that that DD command to image it, and then putting it back in your Raspberry Pi and hooking up your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so if if you were doing this at scale, you would probably want something you know like a Pixie Boot and OS install, which which Tinkerbell is a project out there to help manage some of that. Let's go back and check on these upgrades. Looks like it's still going. Uh, the third node did move to not ready, so that's probably restarting. And there we go. All three of them have been updated. We've got version 1.21.3. Container D is 1.4.8. So pretty, pretty smooth process uh, of, of upgrading your Kubernetes cluster. I oh, forgot to mention. Uh, you can also do that for the operating system or any other arbitrary uh, package as well. Uh, I'm not going to run through that in the interest of time, uh, but let's take a look at what one of those plans look like. 
Uh, so this is for upgrading the OS. Um, I have this arbitrary version number uh, since all I'm doing is a, a, an apt upgrade over here. Uh, the, the server upgrade controller just needs to have a version number that's changed so it knows that it needs to act on this. So this was the, the best way I could think of to solve that for, for now. Uh, but if I was to change that to 01.5, it would say, hey, it's, I've got to apply this new plan. Uh, and it would run this, uh, this, this upgrade.sh uh, script, uh, which just does a apt update. Uh, it installs this uh, firmware uh, updater for, for Raspberry Pi, which is really useful to have this as part of this script, uh, and then does an apt full upgrade and does a reboot if required. So same thing, OS updates, I manage through the Kubernetes API. So thank you, appreciate your time and coming to this session. I'm um, including a uh, GitHub link here for that repo. Uh, that should be pretty out of the box. Um, you, can, you can follow that readme and you'll end up with a three node cluster uh, with all these over the top uh, components uh, sitting in that manifest cluster or folder as well. Uh, here's my LinkedIn profile. Feel free to reach out. Uh, and then I'm also hiring. Uh, so here's a link to the, the current open job description. Uh, feel free to reach out to me directly as well as apply for that job uh, through this portal. So thank you, everyone. Uh, let's move on to the live Q&A session. Have a great day.